so hey everyone um today i'm talking with uh, vladimir um a prominent uh, writer on the beautiful game who has written for such esteemed publications as world soccer magazine uh, the blizzard offside uh, fifa football mundial and this morning we're going to talk about the upcoming world cup so welcome vladimir uh, from i think you're in belgrade at this morning so thanks for joining me this morning Yes, I'm in Belgrade. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Rob. And it's a, it's a nice morning in Belgrade? Yes, it's lovely, sunny, warm. It's spring, summer. Okay, good, good, good. So let's get, get down to the brass tacks then. Um, the World Cup 2018, um, how do you think Serbia will do? Well, to be to be sincere, I, I, I don't have big expectations. I think uh, it's, it's, it's a good success that Serbia qualified after missing out from previous tournaments we were not at Euro 2016, we were not at the Brazil World Cup, the last big tournament was South Africa 2010 mm -hmm. and they were crashed out mm -hmm. after the group stage. So I hope I'm wrong but I, I, I'm not very optimistic. Mm. I mean I, I from Serbia's perspective I'd say it's it's a tough tough enough group. I mean you have Brazil Switzerland and Costa Rica. It's not. It's not a simple group. No, it definitely it, it isn't. There, there are practically no simple groups. Maybe with exception of the group where Russia is, this seems to be a fairly light group. But you never know. No, we have a definitely a tough group because it's uh, it's clear that Brazil is the the favorite uh, and. For the second place, I think Switzerland, Costa Rica, and Serbia mm -hmm. will will fight for the second place. And on paper, maybe the Swiss have have the biggest chances to finish as runners up. Mm. And how do you feel each game will go? So, for example, Brazil, what would you be damage limitation? Is it? Well, it's good that it's the last group in the game, the third one. So mm -hmm. by then, we should probably know already our, our fate or. Mm -hmm. Probably it's possible mm -hmm. because the start for Serbia is against Costa Rica and that's the okay. massive game if we win against Costa Rica things could go well because it would be a impulse the atmosphere would be good it's always good when you start into a tournament with a victory so that the first game against Costa Rica is mm -hmm. is massive yeah the second against Switzerland and then the third against Brazil Mm -hmm. Could be could be academic maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's what you'd hope for, I suppose. Could you could you care to give me a score prediction for each game? Well, <laughs> again, let's, that's that's very difficult. But let's say Costa Rica one one, mm -hmm. Switzerland nil nil or nil one. Okay. And and against Brazil, probably we will lose. I don't know. Okay. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully not. Hopefully not. With a with a margin yeah so so you're not really optimistic at all no oh, i'm not uh, i'm not optimistic uh, but uh, as i said i hope i'm wrong mm -hmm. but uh, because of the the qualifiers there were many unconvincing performances mm -hmm. and also we have a new coach who is a very unexperienced coach it's his first job as head coach mm -hmm. and uh, some players are not in top form also so i think it's realistic uh, mm -hmm. of, of course I, I would like serbia to to reach if possible the semi-finals but i think that's 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 not going to happen mm. i mean as as i say i live in switzerland i mean i have to be honest i don't think it's a great swiss team i mean they do they do struggle to score goals at times i mean and i think if serbia have their strikers ready and, and on farm you know, they could nick a 1-0 win and that could be the difference between getting out of the group or not. Um, so, I mean, coach Mladen Krstajic. <laughs> Krstajic. It's very difficult to pronounce. The correct pronunciation is Krstajic. Krstajic. I don't know yes. much. I don't know a whole lot about him. So, could you give me some information on him, his management style, his personality? Uh, what kind of coach is he? Is he attack-minded or... Also a difficult question because this is his first job as coach. Okay. He, he, he did not uh, work as coach before. He, his first uh, 
job as coach was in the coaching staff of former national coach Slavoj Muslin, starting from spring 2016 okay. for, for one and a half year. And then he, he became the caretaker after the FA decided to sack Muslin and, and, and then they decided to name him as national coach. As a player, he was a top player. He was a central defender and left back, mostly central defender. Mm -hmm. He played on top level in Germany. He won the Bundesliga title with Werder Bremen. He played many years in Germany with Werder Bremen and Schalke, mm -hmm. almost a decade. He was a really good player. He played for the national team. He played also the Germany World Cup. Mm. As a coach, uh, we don't know yet. He, he seems to be talented and ambitious, and uh, but this is his first job. Uh, uh, judging by the by by the games so far, he was in charge. Mm -hmm. it's, di it's difficult to say. He changed formations. Uh, apparently, they will play eventually four two three one. Okay. So uh, I, I think. They will play from a solid defense, uh, but it will be also attacking football because it's in the nature of the Serbian players, especially the players up front like uh, Tadic and and Ljajic and Sergej Milinkovic Savic to, to play attacking football. Also in the qualifiers, we played attacking football. Mm. Um, are there any differences between this Serbian team and Serbian teams of the past, um, the 2010 team? Or? Or is it just a similar kind of Serbian way of playing football? More or less, yes. But I think the the 2010 team was uh, stronger in terms of quality. Mm -hmm. They had a top coach, Radomir Antic, who was who is a big name, who was coach of Real Madrid and FC Barcelona, and he was champion with Atletico Madrid. Yeah, yeah. He, he did really a great job with with Serbian national team in the qualifiers and. They also beat Germany at the World Cup, but yeah. unfortunately they lost the other two games against Ghana and Australia and they went out after the group stage mm -hmm. in South Africa. I think, uh, judging by the names and the quality, they, it, it was a better team mm -hmm. than the present team. They had Nemanja Vidic, Dejan Stankovic, they had some, some players in top form like Miloš Krasic, who later, who soon later signed with Juventus, like Milan Jovanovic, who was a big star in Belgium, and who signed with Liverpool, where he flopped. Mm. So I, I think it, it was a stronger team than the team today, at least judging by the names. Maybe as a team, we will see. But uh, on paper, the 20 team, 2010 team was stronger. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I, like as you know, I'm Irish and. Serbia came out of uh, the same <laughs> group as Ireland. Um, I have to be honest, I, I wasn't really impressed with Serbia. <laughs> I wasn't impressed with any of the teams in that group. I thought it was a, it turned into a very easy group in the end, I think, to get out yeah. of. Um, You're right, I agree with you, I agree with you. You, you probably watched both games, the 2-2 two -two in Belgrade and the 0-1 uh, in, in Dublin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... Uh, I, I was expecting a little more from Wales, to be honest. I thought they might have won the group, but I think they probably had a world, uh, European hangover, you know. So, <laughs> and uh, um, Bale didn't really shine too much. I, I think he's gone dipped in form. So, um, but we'll see. I mean, as I said, Switzerland, uh, Switzerland and Costa Rica—they're they're winnable games for Serbia, I think. From your mouth into God's ears. <laughs> so um, the professional squad list is out. Uh, all the teams have brought them out. Um, are there any players that we, we should keep an eye on? Any players that perhaps were not so well are not so well known? Uh, well, maybe maybe Andrea Zivkovic, the the young winger from from Benfica. Mm -hmm. Who, who will not probably who will, as as good as sure will not be in the starting eleven, but who could who could get playing time? <laughs> he's he's an exciting player. I like to call him the Serbian Aryan Robin because of his play style. Okay. He's he's one of the one of the guys who won the under twenty World Cup three years ago in New Zealand. That was a, that was a massive success for Serbian football in 2015. Mm -hmm. Serbia won the. FIFA under 20 World Cup, mm -hmm. and there are several players in the squad for Russia from that team. We call them the New Zealanders. 
Uh, one of them is Sergei Milinkovic Savic, who is uh, right now. They say that he will sign with Manchester United or with some other top club. They mention okay. that Lazio will claim 100 million for him. <laughs> he, he had a he had a good season at Lazio. So, if you ask me for some players who are not well known, yeah, Sergei Milinkovic Savic. He plays in Italy. Mm-hmm. Andrea Zivkovic. He plays at Benfica. Mm-hmm. Those could be two guys. And the moody Adam Jajic, he's a playmaker of Torino, mm-hmm. who sometimes can play like a world-class player, and in other games he's invisible. Mm. Okay, that's great. But there are, there are some talented players with individual class, with, with great technique. Uh, yeah. Mm. So, I mean, as you said, um, I, I forgot about that, that Serbia actually did win the, the, well, the Honor 20 World Cup. Uh, yes. Or yeah, World Cup wasn't it? So obviously you have a a good age structure then, an underage structure in Serbia that's producing quality footballers. Yeah, we we are apparently an inexhaustible well of 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 talents and an inexhaustible source of talents, and there is also good work at, at youth level with uh, youth coaches and tradition. Unfortunately, many players leave far too early uh, mm-hmm. abroad. They, they sign too early with foreign clubs and some of them waste a couple of years mm-hmm. because it's, it's, it's not the same to play youth football and, and top level senior football. Mm-hmm. And uh, they struggle to, to get playing time. And maybe it would be better if they had played one season more or two seasons more in the, in the third top flight to, to become more mature but that's a matter of money of agents of parents you know that yeah they tend to go abroad too early yeah we have the same kind of issue with irish football and the underage structure i mean the as you said the parents they think of the 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 future (laughs) they get excited the clubs want to cash in on young players and exactly you know and i did they kind of need that extra two years of education, maybe in the local leagues or you know the local setup, just to get used to playing in formations and stuff. When, um, but I, it seems that a lot of Serbian players then just go straight to Italy. Yeah, they go they go to, to various leagues, but um, some of them and many of them go to Italy. Yes. Mm. Okay, um, so how was the build-up for the World Cup with Serbia? I mean, with friendlies, how how how's, how have you been doing in friendlies? Are, are the players hitting peak form at the at the right time? Well, in in March there were two friendlies. Uh, I won two defeat against uh, Morocco in Torino, Italy. Okay, that was a, that was a quite poor performance. Okay. Uh, the Krstajic experimented with a with a too offensive, I think. Many, many thoughts. Too offensive mm-hmm. variant with 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 only one holding midfielder with a four-one-four-one. Okay. And and uh, Serbia didn't look good in that game and lost one-two. Okay. Uh, several days later, they played in London against Nigeria, and won two 0 They looked much better in that game. Mm-hmm. Okay. This time changed, changed, and played with four-two-three-one, and Serbia was was. Uh, was looked quite good in that game. Uh, now the preparations start on Monday, 28 uh, May. Then they go a couple of days later to Austria to a training camp, where they play two warm-up games against Chile and Bolivia on the 4th and on the 9th of June. Mm-hmm. They picked Latin and South American teams, mm-hmm. probably because of the Costa Rica game. Surely because of the Costa Rica game. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, what's the atmosphere like in Serbia? Um, what is the the general mood of the people? Happy to be back at the the top table of football. Uh, realistic, confident. <laughs> what is the general mood? The general mood. I think there is not yet any any big euphoria. It will come when the World Cup starts. Surely, all all people will watch the games on TV. And 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 keep their fingers crossed and, and cheer on Serbia, but uh, at, this, at this point, I at least I cannot sense any euphoria. And, and also, it was it was strange that there were not no big street celebrations, as as they usually always were in the past. Mm-hmm. After Serbia qualified, we won that last game against Georgia one 0 mm-hmm. and. Uh, 
there were very very small celebrations. Mm. Okay, that's uh, that's kind of strange. <laughs> that was kind of strange. Yeah, really. That that was that was surprising. Okay, okay. So uh, maybe maybe they were unhappy with that. Perf- the fans were unhappy with the performance of the national team in that game. A hard labored one 0 win against the supposed underdog Georgia, mm-hmm. or before, or, or because of the very poor performance three days earlier in, in the defeat against Austria two three in Vienna. Mm. So mm-hmm. the, the the celebrations were almost nothing. Okay, and what about yourself, Vladimir? Are you gonna head out to Russia? Yes, I I, I will be at the World Cup. Yes. Okay, and did, um, was it difficult to get your hands on tickets, or how did that work out for you? No, no, I, I, I will, I will work as a journalist. I will, I will, I will, I will actually, I will be a member of a FIFA TV crew. Uh, I will work for HBS. I will be the producer attached to Serbia national team. Excellent, excellent. So, w- what is the the geographical spread then of the Serbian games? Are you traveling all over the country, or? No, 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 no. The, the first game is in Samara. That's a two hour, two and a half hours flight from the base in Kaliningrad. Serbia will be based in, in Svetlogorsk near Kaliningrad. Mm-hmm. That's up there, yeah. That's on, on the Baltic Sea. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. the exclave. That's the exclave. That's practically not Russia. It's yeah, the, it's an exclave. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so the, there is a two and a half hours flight to Samara, okay. where, where Serbia plays the first game against Costa Rica. The second game is in Kaliningrad against Switzerland. So no travel. Mm-hmm. And the third game, hopefully not last, is in Moscow against Brazil. That's a okay. one-hour flight. Yeah, that's so it's, it's it's no big deal. It's no big deal. Yeah, you're not getting the slow train from Kaliningrad then across. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I was I was reading stories that it takes you 24 hours or something <laughs> like that to get from. Yeah. Yeah. From Kaliningrad to Samara or something like that. Yeah, well, that's not a bad trip considering because some teams have to go up and down and across, don't they? Really? Yeah. I did. I didn't check that. I didn't yeah. check that. Who do you fancy for the World Cup? Who do you think is going to win it? Well, my my personal favorite is France. Mm. I think that that France could win this World Cup. Okay. Most people. I'm impressed. To... I'm impressed with the with the choice of players. They're practically two teams. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And uh, the, some some young hungry players in there. Mm-hmm. So uh, actually, when I when I watched them in that uh, game against Netherlands in the in the qualifiers when they played phenomenal football, mm-hmm. I, I I got that idea that that my favorite <laughs> is France. Of course, all the other candidates are Germany, Spain, yeah, Argentina, yeah. Brazil. As always, always the same names. That's no big difference, but yeah. I don't bet. But but if if I would make <laughs> some bet, I would put my money on France. Yeah, I do bet. So <laughs> I, I I might look at France actually in the betting. You don't know. listen to me. I, I usually lose with when I betting with my friend. <laughs> yeah, I, I, mean, I guess you're right. Like I mean, they do have very good technical players. France. It's just it's phenomenal. It's just a question of can the players a. a, a Coherent unit. Um, so, right. any right. any dark horses then? Are, are there any teams that you think an African team or you know or someone that might surprise in this World Cup? I, I don't know the African team so well. I must admit, <coughs> maybe a dark horse, dark horse under quotation mark because they're also a top team that they could go far as Belgium. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've been waiting for Belgium for a long time. Yeah, yeah. It's maybe it's maybe high time. It's maybe high time that they really achieve something. Now they have a better coach than 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 Wilmots, who allegedly was 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 not was not so good. Yeah, he couldn't. He didn't really get on with the players. Um, okay. Do you think? Do you think that that the Russia World Cup will be a success? Do you think it's going to be a good World Cup? I hope so. I hope so. I I remember that people were sort of. Skeptic because uh, before the last World Cup that the football would not be good and it was a phenomenal World Cup It was a really great everybody enjoyed mm-hmm. the matches in Brazil 2014 mm-hmm. And and I hope it, it will be again. So of course that's The eternal problem is that the players are tired after a long season in the leagues the top players especially mm-hmm. but uh, Let's hope it will be again a similar is if it's built if it will be nearly as good as Brazil We should be happy yeah, once the, once the football gets on the way, people get into it. And are there many Serbian fans uh, traveling over? Uh, I don't think so. Um, there there will be Serbian fans from the diaspora, 
from from Germany, Scandinavia, Austria, from 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 Western Europe. I hope so that they will turn up a lot of them from Serbia also, but not many because it's 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 quite expensive and. Uh, uh, I, and, and I hope that the Russians will cheer for us because the relationship uh, between Serbia and Russia is a good one, mm -hmm. unlike um, many other European countries <laughs> at, at this moment. Uh, you might get a nice, so, a nice referee, maybe. <laughs> so, so I, I think that we will have. I hope that we will have good support. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, as you know, I have a beer blog. Um, I can pretty much only get uh, Jelen. Jelen beer. Jelen, Jelen. Yeah, it's yeah. pronounced Jelen, not Jelen. Jelen. Excuse my pronunciation. <laughs> is is that is that a popular beer? And uh, it's one so of the it's one of the top two. Yeah, it's love. Love means lion, and okay. Jelen, by the way, means deer. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the top two brands, and people in in bars and cafes and restaurants mostly order and drink Jelen. Although, of course, they're m much better beer brands. Mm -hmm. Also available some Belgian yeah. beer, Czech beer, German beer, but the, the the mass consumption is Yellen and Love. Yes. Yeah. So it's it's good enough when Serbia play, I can enjoy it then. Okay. Yes. Um, but how can, how will you how will you find a Yellen in, in Switzerland? Uh, I I can I think uh, Switzerland does actually have a a big um, population of people from uh, the former Yugoslavia. Of course it does. Of course yeah, it does. So you you would also. So you think you will find some bar with Yellen beer? I, I've I've bought it before. I have bought it before in in supermarkets. Uh, you can. Oh, get, really? You can get you can get Serbian beer. You can get a uh, Croatian. Oh, I didn't know that. I Cro didn't know that. Croatian beer. You can get Bosnian. Uh, Great. Kosovo, I didn't know that. Even beer. <laughs> but unbelievable. I've unbelievable. Got, in the I've, middle of Switzerland. Yeah, well, I got it before, but at the moment I can't find it. They don't sell it anymore. But I'm, I'm sure it's somewhere. I just have to find the right supermarket. Okay, okay. <laughs> if not, I will send you one. I will send you six packs with DHL, but, but <laughs> you will pay for it. No, no, don't worry. I can get Serbian beer. <laughs> okay. Um. So just a, a, just a few more questions, Vladimir. Um. So apart from the uh, the World Cup, what about the the current uh, Serbian national league uh, this season? Was it a was it a good championship? Um... It was a, it was a good championship for for Crvena Zvezda for for Red Star Belgrade because they they dom they dominated it and they won it with seventeen points uh, a margin ahead of their arch rivals Partizan. Okay, and they, they were champions and they also reached against the odds. The, the knockout stage of the UEFA Europa League, which didn't happen for 20 and 25 years. Okay. So the league just finished. Partizan won the cup. Red Star won the league, and uh, uh, the league is on a quite mediocre level. Of course, all the all the best players play abroad. Uh -huh. There are some talented young players. There are some experienced players who who, who came back from from foreign clubs. Uh, and but the the interest is not big. There are many games only with 500 attendants. Small clubs have 400, 500 fans. So it's it's truly one of the poorest leagues in Europe. Yeah, uh, def yeah. definitely third third or fourth class in Europe. Yeah. Which which you can only also see by the successes in Europe. It's it's already a big success if 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 they get to the group stage of the Europa League. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess it's it's as soon as you have a good a team has a good player, they just have to pass them on. Then I guess exactly. Yeah. Pressure. But I mean, <clears throat> it's well known for the derby. The derby, though, the Belgrade derby is one of those derbies everybody has to do. Yes. And, and uh, have you been to it? It's always it's always a big game, although although it also declined a bit. It's not anymore a capacity crowd. It's not on, uh, not anymore always full the stadium also because of the hooligan problem. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, the, the Belga derby is still a big thing in Serbian football. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it, Vladimir. You, you've given me a good, good amount of time there. Um, so where can people find your, your articles online or uh, some of the stuff you do? Uh, online, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> do you have? I, a... I, I, I do some I do some articles uh, 
recently not so much for for Titan Sports Plus. That's okay. a Chinese media. Okay. And uh, I I worked for World Soccer, but I don't know if they put it online. Mm -hmm. uh, I I work for World Soccer Digest Japan. Mm -hmm. I have a monthly column there. Mm. I also don't know if, if they put it online. I don't check that so much. Or in English, maybe. <laughs> uh, in English, uh, recently not so. No, no. Yeah. I, I, I did a, I did a story for for a Swiss magazine recently, but uh, I don't know if that's is okay. going online. Okay. I work for the first time for them. Okay. So. Well, I, I'll give a link. I'll give a link in the bottom of my YouTube. I mean, I'll, I'll link your Twitter account. I'm sure uh, you, you always put stuff on your Twitter account. Then. Not uh, not so much. I, 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 I sort of became very inactive uh, recently with with Twitter and Facebook. Uh, for at one point, I was commenting things a lot, but yeah, uh, I became lazy with Twitter. Yeah. Well, I, I'll I'll find maybe when I get into World Cup mode, I, I will I will start again. Yeah, well, I'll pull, I'll pull something up and put it post it on my the bottom of my YouTube. Um, so thanks very much for your time and uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend, Vladimir. Likewise. Are you going to the World Cup to Russia? No, it's just not. Ireland are not there. <laughs> oh, yeah, I like the there. <laughs> and Switzerland, I, I find them very difficult to watch. Switzerland, I, I I don't think they play nice football at all. So, no, I'm to be honest, I'm more into club football. Like I, like I see FC Basel. FC Basel is your club. I see. On judging by your cap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They lost this, they lost the league this year, though. So. <laughs> yeah, young boys. Young boys Bern became the champions. Yeah. yeah, first time in I don't know eight seasons or something. So. <laughs> yeah, I watched. I watched young boys both times against Partizan. They played in the group stage. Yeah, yeah. I was. I wasn't impressed by young boys. Yeah, but I think they had. They, they really wanted to get the league this year. So it's for some of those European games, they were kind of half-hearted. Once they got to the Europa wow. League, in the Champions League, they played much better. But once they got knocked out of the Champions League, they had, they really had uh, half their head in the league. Because I, I don't know, it's league. been 16, 16 years or something since they won it. So they, they wanted to get that league win. And to be fair, they've had, they have played some really good football in the league. You know, so they've, they're well-deserved win it you know so and yeah. now they must look for a new coach because Adi Hütter went, went for for Germany oh I didn't see that so who, who, he went to German football team yeah yeah yeah. he he signed I think with uh, with Leipzig or with Fra no with Frankfurt he will be the successor of Nico Kovac <laughs> who signed with, with Bayern Munich Adi, Adi Hütter the coach who who guided young boys Bern to the Swiss league title he will be the uh, head coach of Eintracht Frankfurt next season. And and so Eintracht Frankfurt had a good season. So who where's he gone? That manager is he gone to Bayern? <laughs> he he <laughs> he's going to Bayern. So it's like a, Niko, a step in. Niko Kovac is going to Bayern. Yeah, that's the that's a, that's a deal you cannot reject, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it just shows you a little bit of success can you can jump yeah, the ladder, yeah. you know. <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay, Vladimir. Have a nice weekend. Very pleasure. Likewise. To, pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Likewise. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Cheers. Bye. -bye. bye.